Uh, it's it's so interesting to see, but <laughs> fun. You're popular. You're popular, Ariel. Oh my god. What's going on, you guys? It's your huggable hipster here. I'm, I'm here with Techie. What a one. Hi. How you I doing, dude? Again, it was a lot of fun the first time, <laughs> but god. you know, stuff happens. Guys, funny story. Actually, horrifying story. I had to reboot my entire system, and he's going through dealing with me again. So this is. Oh. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh no! It's all good. I like I like talking. I haven't talked to you in so many years, so this kind of makes up for lost time. There we go. It really does. Actually, hold on a second. Something is missing over here. Oh my there god! Go. That's crazy. Go. How go. did you do that? I, post production me really knows some stuff, doesn't she? You have magic powers. I have. I have. Can I clap my fingers and make things happen? No. Okay. <laughs> it takes. It takes time. It takes time. It's like in it, fairy it, tale, it, you know. Don't mention that series. <laughs> Have you seen? There's a there's a sequel, like not a sequel, but a new series by that author. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. It's called it's called Eden Zero. The main character and the main the main the male lead and the female lead literally look like it's Natsu, but with black hair. That's the main character. So what we're gonna delve into today, which we delved into the last time that we tried doing this, was we talked extensively on Death Note. That we didn't like it. No, no. The fact that it's made a movie. To clarify, we did like the anime, but we don't like the fact that it got turned into a movie. Now, from research and diving under the very pits of the universe, uh, I found out that they're making a second one. And, Tekking, uh, what do you think about this? I'm not a fan, Ariel. Not a fan. Um, so, yeah, basically what we talked about is Death Note. I'm a big fan of Death Note. I watched the anime. I, I have it on DVD. I have the manga. I read the whole manga. Um, some of the live-action movies they came out with in Japan were okay. It's not really a series that requires a lot of, like, CG. Usually anime yeah. movies that are made live-action aren't that great. I don't know if you're familiar with, like, the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was an American take on it, though. And this was an American take on Death Note. And I'm thinking, okay, the premise is they could take this and maybe do a different story. They did the story kind of like in the manga, but they changed so many things and characters. But it just wasn't my cup of tea, no. Yeah, same here. I mean, the, the way that they completely botched up the ending, the, that's just what got me the most, because, like I said before, he dies at the hands of the Shinigami, and he has this brilliant plan, but then it goes wired. Like, it's... Yeah, it's... it's. It, I think the two major problems I have with the movie are, number one, Light's portrayal. Uh, he's not... Por he's honestly portrayed more as, like, a regular teenager, but the thing is, Light is not a regular teenager. He's yeah. a genius. And you might say, well, why don't they just... It's not the same character. I'm like, well, why did they give him the same name? Come on, you could have given him a different yeah. name. They changed his last name, not his first name. There's so many weird naming choices with this movie. Yeah. Um, and, and the second big problem I have with it is, well, Ryuk's character, and we talked uh, about this. Willem mm -hmm. Dafoe did a good job of this. Yes, he did. Um, so I have no problem with the actual character of Ryuk, but he's really not in it all that much. Whenever he is, it's a treat. Mm -hmm. But overall, Ryuk is set up as, like, this demon that's like a puppet master, like, puppeteering light from the yes. shadows and stuff. And at the end of the movie, he does the thing with the Ferris wheel and everything. Whereas yeah. in the original, the Shinigami were set up as, like, more or less just observers. They didn't get involved with what's going on. And that gave it a human element to it. Like, it's not it's not a bunch of demons manipulating everything. It's just the humans that are doing all the messed up stuff. But exactly. now here, it's, it's just Ryuk. And, so, I'm and that's like, the thing that I was kind of peeved about as well. Whenever we saw all of the uh, the Shinigami kind of gathering in like a, a club, <laughs> so to speak, in yeah, the, in the anime, Shinigami world, yeah, yeah, and I really wanted to see that take on. It. I wanted to see kind of like how they would portray all of them in a way, like in that circle discussing humans and how stupid they are. Like, it's, it's something that's interesting because it's the Shinigami world is not fleshed out too much, even in the anime or the manga. No. There's a bunch of different Shinigami that are given names, and there's like a ranking system, and they talk about the Shinigami King, yes. who is this just amorphous blo like, like, there's a picture of him. He's just this really crazy looking thing that's like on chains that's like hanging. He looks like an alien. Yes, exactly. But they don't go into that stuff in the anime, but, you know, it'd be cool if they touched upon it. <laughs> At least, you know, have like a, a prequel or something to have oh, yeah. just something where they talk about the Shinigami. Well, I would tell you what. That. There is one DVD special. It's called Death Note Relight. Get it? It's like rewrite, <laughs> except re relight. Get it? And that kind of takes on like a different angle of everything. And the premise of the movie, the special, is that a young Shinigami approaches Ryuk, and Ryuk tells him the story about light and everything. So we find out a little bit more about that. It's a two-part OVA. It's Death Note Relight, and there's an English dub of it as well. Oh, 
Yeah, it's it's mostly just a recap of the series, but they they take on other stuff too. They they add some extra stuff to it. You see, I need to check that. I didn't even know of that existence. Yeah, Pro- probably the favorite part of that, just really quick, is there's mm-hmm. a scene where light it, they're burying L and light like is literally getting on his hands and knees in front of L's grave, and he's like, "I won, L." <laughs> You know, he's just, it's really demented, but it really that, shows Light's crazy side. That is crazy. Like, that just fits his character. He goes it from, does. like, this honor student who yeah. quite possibly has Asperger's to oh, someone who is completely demented and crazy and just oh. filled with this lust for just killing people. It's so <laughs> wild because they're doing the funeral for L, and all of the police officers are around and they're, like, walking away. And I'm like, I'm gonna stay a little bit longer, guys. And as soon as they get out of air shot, his eyes go all crazy, and he gets, you know, onto the dirt, and he's like shouting down into the grave, like, "I win!" So yeah, that that that's a perfect scene to represent Light's character in a nutshell. I can't yeah. imagine what Ryuk would be like if you were there. I'd be like, "Okay, calm down, calm down." It's yeah, okay. No, he was there. He was behind him, just oh kind of like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, yeah, he's just watching him do this, like, "Okay, well, that's okay." <laughs> It's a good scene. I would recommend it. But yeah, the live-action movie was not up for my taste, and ah, there's a sequel. I'm probably going to have to watch it, but, Me too. you know, and I'll just, watch just it with because. my fans again and make fun of it. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. That's the fun part, because whenever I was watching it, like I said before, I was live-tweeting the entire thing, and I was telling yeah. people, I know I'm late to the party, but let's try and see if we can make it through together in one piece. <laughs> It's such a long movie, too. It's it's. I don't remember how long it was, but I think it might have been pushing two hours. It was, and I was surprised yeah. because, you know, partial in part to the fact that it is wonderful anime, so I was like, okay, maybe they're doing it justice with the length, but, you know, the, no. No, 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 much of it, there's that weird random uh, uh, foot chase scene that goes <laughs> on for, like, ten minutes between L and Light, and I'm sitting there like, like am that? I even watching Death Note anymore? Is this, like, freaking Lethal Weapon or something? Like, what am wow. I watching at this point? You yeah, know? turned into the Matrix real quick there. Yeah, yeah, they're jumping over cars, and L has a gun, and I'm thinking, it's the... I don't know if they were watching Death Note, but this whatever the hell I'm watching isn't really Death Note. This, <laughs> you is, know? this is American movies. This is it. They, it... There has to be an action <sighs> scene. There was a little be. bit of action. There was a few police chases in Death Note, but I just it didn't fit right, I don't think. Well, they used it sparingly. They used it in yeah. accordance with what was going on to make sense. This just I think didn't make the, sense. I, yeah, I think the thing that blew me was it was L that was like chasing Light himself with a gun. I'm just thinking, this is so surreal. This is so weird. With, with a gun, especially. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. Light, for L, especially, yeah. But yeah, anyway. since we went into this really in-depth yesterday, which... Uh, uh, it was a great conversation. I wish you guys yeah. could see it. I wish it could be revived, but it's lost to the uh, nanites of the digital world forever. Exactly. So, yeah. But you know what? We went full on sassy, and we're probably going to do that again right now, talking about this next subject. You guys know Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, what you doing with your life, honey? Wait, I got, I got this. I got this. It's about a girl named Buffy, and she slays vampires. Okay, good. There you go. But yes, <laughs> she falls in love. She does the thing. There, there's just yeah. She so does much. other. She does other stuff too. There's but, just yeah. so much involved. There's a lot of philosophy actually within the series. Oh, there, surprisingly, I I am not a huge. I haven't seen all of it. Mm-hmm. I think I've only seen the first four or five seasons. It's been several years since I've watched it. Um, and we didn't even have this discussion the other the other day because no, we didn't find no. out about it too later. We had a mutual friend that was into it, and she got me into it and all that stuff. <laughs> but. uh yeah, yeah. So you told me they're they're thinking about rebooting it. Are they bringing back what are the deets? Are they bringing back Sarah Michelle Gellar and all that, or you know, what's going to happen? Unfortunately, they're not bringing back the entire cast of characters. It's going to be a completely uh, new reboot with a different script, but the same uh, writer, Joss, Joss Whedon. Whedon. Yeah, Joss Whedon. Okay, yes. as long as Joss Whedon is still there, that gives me hope because that guy is a He's really good. good writer. He wrote the he was the writer for the first, or he was the director for the first Avengers movie. Yes, I yeah. think did a, such a great job there. I, I have hope as long as Joss Whedon is part of this. I do too, to a certain extent, but I'm still a bit trepidatious with this entire thing because, for me, I'm very protective over that season. It was the very first like reason why I really got into like vampire literature and culture and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So I really think Joss Whedon did like a great service because Buffy the Vampire Slayer I think helped get a lot of girls into kind of like the nerdy yeah. kind of culture. Because it was like, when I was watching it, I wasn't 100% sure when it was made. And so when I started watching it, I'm like, this was in the late 90s? This oh, is pretty yeah. good. This oh, was yeah. pretty progressive for the late 90s. I think the first lesbian kiss was on Buffy. Yeah, it really know? was. And that's why I was so shocked, because I remember 
watching that series when I was like seven or eight years old, and my ah, mom was yeah. like, it has vampires, come here, you'll love this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like sitting there, I'm like, Angel? <laughs> I, had, I, I had heard of it, and I always thought to myself, that's a cool sounding name for a show, but I never watched it up until I was in college. But while I was watching it, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm watching something not from the 90s. This seems like yes. something a lot later on. But uh, yeah, yeah, great series. Yeah, I'm it, more of a Spike. By the way, I'm more of a Spike fan than Angel because I'm not a huge fan of Angel. But and even Angel didn't he get that spinoff for like a few seasons? He did. That's why yeah. he's Angel and Spike didn't get one. T spilled. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because I watched the Angel spinoff, and even I can agree with you with the fact that he is a little bit more melodramatic than he needed to be. But that is Angel's yeah. character, so what can he do? Yeah, from the first season, I wasn't a fan of him from the first season because he just seemed like, I'm the mysterious, you know, goth kid or whatever. I'm the hot guy that's going to be your, you know, boyfriend or whatever. Here's my leather jacket. So I do have to ask because I know people will ask this down in the comment section. Who do you ship in Buffy? It's, it's, it's Buffy. It's there you go. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Although, uh, after the first season, I was hoping Xander maybe <laughs> was Buffy. <laughs> Oh my god, Xander. He's such a good Xander, character. I feel for Xander. I feel for him so bad because he's like the nerdy kid and he's got a friend that's, you know, a cute girl and he's like, maybe. And I'm like, maybe. And like, no. I'm like, oh, that was that was squashed pretty quickly. But I'm like, maybe. And I also feel like he actually also tried for Willow and then she's like, I'm sorry, I like girls. And then she's like, oh, okay. If I remember correctly, at the beginning of the second season, uh, Xander and, and Willow are hanging out a little bit, and there's like mm -hmm. a there's a there's a overtone there, like there's gonna be something. Yeah. So yeah. maybe. And then you get but yeah, but then later on with Willow, you find out that yeah. Yeah, and then you get into like the whole thing with Oz, and I was like, oh, that's just sad. <laughs> that was just sad. Yeah, like Oz. Oz is cool. For those of you who don't know who, what we're talking about, go to the fourth season of Buffy. Actually, watch the entire thing if you haven't watched the entire thing, because it is a classic. Like There are seven seasons, right? Yeah, seven seasons, okay. and then they continued on to an eighth season, but they did that through a comic book. Yeah, I heard about the comics, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So It's just a little universe that I haven't gotten into, and I need to examine everything now. <laughs> well, the thing is that I didn't understand about when they uh, did the eighth season of the comic book, they turned Buffy into like this supernatural creature along with Giles, and they made them all have I love superpowers. Giles! Giles was so cool! Really you know? Good. He's like the ideal librarian that everybody wants. British, always there for you. And just a vampire slayer. I mean, I always love. That. I always love how high school was portrayed in those shows too. Because <laughs> I don't know about you guys, if you're in high school, but it ain't like that. It's not. You, know? you don't. You don't get really epic British librarians that are into the mystical arts, and then like, yeah, yeah, we're, we don't have that in here. No, that'd be so cool if we did. My librarian was like a four foot like fat lady, <laughs> but you know, she was super nice. <laughs> but <shade>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the first season, well, I didn't see that until I was maybe like 13, 14 years old. I saw the second season first. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I had to backtrack, and then I remember the time when VHS was still around, and they were still making those on VHS, and DVD uh, okay. was yeah. just coming out when I was 10. <laughs> I watched most of it on Hulu back when I used to do Hulu a lot. For those of you who like the show and who want to check out Buffy, be sure to because it's wonderful. I think it's still on Netflix, if I remember, uh, if memory yep. serves me correctly. But do you do you know when the new season's coming out, or is is there an announcement for that, or the they are in uh, like production for it right now? But all I heard was that they are redoing Buffy with a new cast of characters. All right. It would just be nice if they did it like, oh, Buffy has a daughter or something, but not like yeah, that would be that would be a cool way to do it or something. Yeah. yeah. Because Sarah Michelle Gellar, she still acts. She's still around, you know? So, yeah, keep her in that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, even if it's just, like, an Easter egg or, like, a small, like, little tidbit <laughs> of something, like, being in there. But, yeah. But the next thing that we're going to go into is we are going to teach Matt a little bit of Korean this time That's around. That's good. I don't know a lot of Korean, yeah. So, what we're going to do is we are going to teach him how to say, Hello, my name is Matt it's nice to meet you. So, okay. I'm going to say fast, that way you guys know how it sounds, and then we're going to take you step by step on how to say it. Uh, so, okay. uh, you bow first, and, 안녕하세요, 저는 Ariel입니다, 좀 비켜봅니다. So, that's the way you're okay. going to say it. Okay, let's, let's break that down a little bit, but thank you. <laughs> so, the first word is, 저는. 저는. Matt. Matt. 입니다. 입니다. 좀. 좀. 
Pick up sumida. Pick. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a pick up. All right. Pick up sumida. Pick up sumida. Yes. All right. Yeah. So. I'm more. I, I. I. You know, Japanese is one thing, but you know, there's different. There's different phonetics and stuff in, in Korean a little bit. <laughs> it is. It's a very uh, consonant-heavy language. So, yeah. I noticed. So, okay. You gotta speak a little bit now. It's shonen. Mat. Shonen. Mat. Ma- mat. Imida. Imida. Chom. Som. No, chom. Chom. Okay, chom. not som. Pex- chom. Peksumida. Peksumida. Yes. Now try okay. saying it all together. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> sh- 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 shonen. <laughs> shonen. Mat. Imida. What's the? N- Imida. Chom. Chom. Pixumida. Yes. Okay. Yay, okay. I got it. On. I got it. All right. I think I got this. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put actually links down in the description below where you guys can find out how to introduce yourself in Korean. No, this isn't. Is this is not hashtag sponsored? Although I kind of wish it were though. <laughs> but uh, we are going to go into one other Korean word of the day. And today's Korean word of the day is actually really kind of easy. It is keyboard, which is just keyboard. Oh, okay. Keep- That's easy enough. Keep yeah. order, dude. Keep okay. order. The, a lot of the stuff in like Japanese is like that too. It's just you know when you're translating words from other cultures, you know, it just translates out to like yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is is that remember, guys, whenever you're learning Korean, do not go for the romanization. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but the romanization is like not not even accurate nine times out of ten. So learn the Hangu, which is the Korean alphabet first, and then. Mm. See what the romanization is like. Go from there, and you'll be able to distinguish for yourselves if it's accurate or not. You're inspiring me to get back into learning Japanese. I have like three books on it. I just keep forget. I, I just you know, I have an app too, but I just I just kind of dropped off from doing it for a while. Well, I yeah. started learning Japanese a little bit because I really wanted to see more of the subtitles for Fairy Tale. Yeah, like, <laughs> I think that's why a lot of people try to learn Japanese is just so they can understand subbed anime better. <laughs> It, it is. It is true. I started learning Korean because I really am into BTS, and I wanted to learn what they were saying. And then after yeah. that, I uh, found out that I'm going to be traveling to Korea, so I was like, I'm going to okay. learn this language. Yeah, you probably should at least learn the basics on that. Yeah. yeah. Here, it, my my go to is whenever I if I ever go to Jap- Japan, I have um, this ego no hanase maska, and it just means do you speak English? English. Yeah. So that's a that's an easy way to like okay let's start with that and see where that go or good day and then oh how gazaimas is good morning and then konbanwa is good evening. Wow, oh, I remember saying konbanwa. That. That's a lot more fun to say konbanwa. Uh, and arigato is thank you. Arigato is thank you. Yes. Yeah. And one thing that I actually learned, uh, my dad actually traveled to Taiwan, and he stayed there for four years doing business, and he had a lot of Japanese clients and everything, and mm. he would always get um, other like Korean clients as well, and he would always get the two languages mixed up, and he was like, uh, oh, I'm going to say, oh, arigato. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, uh, sir, I do not speak this weird language now <laughs> it's like, that oh. you've, crea- you've created by combining Korean and Japanese. Uh. Also, for another word that is very handy to use is kyopi, which is coffee. Kyopi, that's cute. Kyopi. And then, kyopi. and I know that's kohi in uh, in Japanese as well. <laughs> oh yeah, and, oh we're, t- we're talking about cup or coffee. Coffee is kohi. Yeah, coffee is is, is kohi. Yeah. yeah, I also love when I was learning it a little bit, like how words, like if you were gonna introduce yourself in America, you'd say <laughs> hi. Okay, and a word in Japanese that's similar is hi and it means fly. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. So you would say, you, yeah, you would say arigato, or how do you introduce yourself? Be like, um, a, a, a little bit of a formal way to do it is, um, watashi wa no name wa uh, mato desu, mm-hmm. and that's you know my name is Matt, or you can just watashi wa mato desu, yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because I know we were talking about before whenever like there's a formal and informal way to talk to a lot of people. Yeah. So whenever you guys, if you guys are traveling to Korea or Japan, just keep in mind the formalities, keep in mind the honorifics and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff because the way that I just introduced myself when I was teaching that was the honorific uh, formal way to do it. And you don't introduce yourself in an informal way because I see a lot of K-boppers trying to do that. So yeah. just forewarning. <laughs> Little, little side note on that too is the word that because if you just look up the straight translation for the word your mm-hmm. or or no no it's you like you it's like anata but you don't really use anata too much in Japan only like you know married couples use that word yes. or something so if I was talking to you I wouldn't just be saying hey anata you I would be like Ariel san because exactly. you're my friend you know I would still add an honorific even though I know you quite well you know stuff like that so it's just a very more professional kind of culture yeah and yeah. you know what I kind of 
uh, wish that in America, so, to some degree, it would be kept like yeah. that because we have such a lazy way of talking a lot of the time. Oh, we do. I hear it so much working in retail. <laughs> Oh, it's like, suh, dude, what's going on? It's like your superior who's 30 years old. I'm like, oh, good lord. Oh. To be fair, my superior is 41, and I talk to her in those weird ways. But we, I've worked together with her for seven years, so she's well, used to my yeah. she's used to my antics. We we got the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but to finish up this tea talk, I want to ask Matt a very specific question to still keep it in somewhat of the gaming realm, because you know we do gaming on this channel. So what I'm going to ask is, what is your go-to game at the moment? At the moment, okay, uh, Persona 5. Okay, if you've played that. I actually was really mad because I wanted to play it on my YouTube channel. And YouTube has this feature where you can just download... You can uh, let's play straight from your PS4 to YouTube. Mm -hmm. The problem is cutscenes are uh, omitted. So whenever you enter a cutscene, the screen goes blank. And most of Persona 4, much of Persona 4, uh, 5, sorry, yeah. is a cutscene. And that ruined it. Now, I could do it on Twitch, and I have other software to do it, but that's just mm -hmm. suck. But I like Persona 5. I'm enjoying it, yes. If you can, and if you want to get into, like, a segment on your channel for gaming, I would recommend getting the Elgato. That way you keep all oh, the cutscenes. I have that right here, actually. Okay. See, see. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't gotten a chance to bust it. I'm not a gamer. I'm not a super gamer on my channel. Usually when I game, it's Pokemon games, and that's all on my emulator, so I don't need nice. an Elgato for that. But I just finished mm -hmm. up Pokemon Prism, which is a homemade Pokemon game. Ooh, nice. It's great. You can design your own character. Mine mm -hmm. was literally a sexy vampire girl who, <laughs> who I named, um, remember have you ever watched uh, Scooby-Doo? Mm -hmm. There was an old Scooby-Doo movie that had the, the hex girls in it. Oh my remember god, that? I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the main hex girl, the red one, her name was Thorn, so I named this girl Briar. And she was the sexy vet. There's so much, so many of my fans made fan art of her. And it was so much fun to do this for like three months. I just finished it up like last uh, last month. But it's uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. <laughs> I, I I can already see the comments now. You need to have one uh, where you name the her manga girl. <laughs> burger girl or manga girl? No, one of the two. Oh my god! I got a message from someone. Actually, this is funny, and I should mention this right now. Yeah. I got yeah. a message from someone doing a meme of me for manga girl, and I didn't mention mm. this on my YouTube channel before, but I sent a picture to Matt, and here it is, right here. I think it's absolutely right. Well, it's, 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 abs it's right there. It's right in front of you. You're it's, holding it with your hand. It's crazy. An intellectual who made yeah. this. I mean, come on, guys. You know, good at this. Guy. It's a good one. Good it's a good one. The memes are live. Yeah. The memes. The memes are fresh with this one. Okay. Fresh and dang. Okay. <laughs> but I do have to say thank you guys so much for joining this tea talk. Thank you so much, Matt, for coming in, uh, Teching One One. No and, problem. You know. Yeah. So I'm really Here. excited because I was I was really tempted to just have a completely new idea since everything crashed, and I was so happy that this finally worked out. So yeah. Yay for technology working. <laughs> Yeah, it, it can be a great uh, evil or a great mistress. It just depends on <laughs> what mood it's in, I guess, with technology. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. If, if you guys like my face, want to do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because YouTube has a funny way of showing its love when it comes to notifications. Ding. So yep. be sure to stay casual and nerdy, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. And be sure to subscribe to my lovely friend Teching One Hundred and One. Peace. Later.